Moved, I think about 200 pounds out of the car, 220 pounds, all the way down to look at my brakes. If it doesn't look like there's brakes in there, it's because they are the tiniest and lightest brakes possible. We've removed the crash structure in a previous video behind my bumper. And the next step up is doing the interior. We're gonna take out everything. I didn't plan on going as far as other people are, so now I have to go a little bit harder. And there are people literally removing the full interiors all the way down to speakers and stuff out of the car. Headliner, it's about two, three pounds each thing. And we're gonna try doing all that too. And then after we will scale the car and see just how light we can make it. There's obviously things we are adding back along the way, like nitrous. There will be some additions. Obviously I have a massive front mount intercooler. So I think it was how much of intercooler weigh? 60 pounds. We put a heavy intercooler. We put two turbos in the car. So there is definitely some weight that we've added to it. Plus we're doing bigger piping than the downpipe. Check this out. You, the guy should tell you not to worry about it. How pinch is there a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks better. It's gonna look cool with two of those. So there's certain things like that we're doing to add a little bit of weight here and there, but overall the goal is take out as much as possible. Even including my carbon fiber bucket seats that are super duper expensive and worth a bunch of money. We tried to weigh each piece of the interior individually to try to keep track of exactly how much weight we pulled. You guys will see, we do have an idea of the exact weight we pulled out. When it all got added together, it was all kept track of. But all the footage that was recorded was so zoomed in, I'm not gonna go through all of it to show you each piece. We're gonna do a separate thing on how much weight we took out and add it all up. This is a condensed version. The reality is to all the parts were pretty light. The carpet on the E36 M3, for example, is like 50 to 80 pounds. The carpet in this car was maybe 10 pounds. There's no sound ending from the factory, but all the little things do add up to hundreds of pounds removed in total. So it is worth it. Uh, who spilled coffee in my car? What are you talking right here, about? Right here, bro. No, not, no, no, I probably did it. Nelson, what are we down so far on the uh, weight of the interior we took out? Let me see. Everything that we took out, as of right now, it was 360, I believe. It's pretty good. 360 pounds out of the interior. Obviously, we need a driver's seat to be put back in it. We need these little plexiglass things to be put back in it and yeah, pin yeah. them up. Yeah. So I would say, like, after everything, I'm going to be surprised if we're back down, like, 30 to 40 pounds. Sounds like a lot for, like, one seat. Yeah. But the seat's... 10, 12 to 15 brackets, seat belt harness, maybe the, the little harness bar. If I do that, if I don't go to the back, maybe I go to the back instead. I think it's probably high enough to go to the rear deck and be safe, like up to here or something. But um, so we'll be at 300 something there. We're over 200 out of the car the other way. So we're gonna be over 500 pounds pulled out. I'm down five pounds so far. I said I could lose about 20 previously. I don't know if I'll keep that off by the time the car's in, if I'll start eating again. To make the plexiglass windows, it was sort of a long process. All the doors had to be fully stripped down, the window motors removed, and then all the glass taken out. The glass is then outlined on top of our plexiglass, as we call it. All edges were cut and trimmed so they wouldn't damage my OEM door seals. That way, if I ever put the OEM windows back in, they would still work. And the glass actually cut, so I think it would actually work with the stock window regulator, but we're not trying that. We're making custom brackets just to fully lock them up forever. Also make them so they were, would be super tight and never move around. We had to do this four times. So weight-wise in the car, Nelson went and fully stripped down all the doors, door panels. He's weighed pretty much everything along the way. And this is where I'm at. I, we've decided to not cut the doors and not buy a spare door. So spend $2,000 on four doors to save another 20 to 40 pounds. While that is a lot of savings and there are people doing it, it's not in my wheelhouse right now. I just don't, um, I can't justify that. Spend that much money to do that. It's not really in the cards. Interior wise, it is gutted. And when I say it is gutted, it is gutted. This front carpet's gonna stay because we have to trim, we have to like take apart a lot of things to get it out. So I think that's gonna stay. There will be no door panels in the car. We might do a little, um, um, harness thing so that way I can be in like a full halo seat with proper harnesses and like a fire suit for personal safety reasons. Crash car 180 you got problems anyway. I'm trying to go really really fast so I think that's that's in the now let's make a little bracket for the motive reflex to go right here. We're also redoing these these up pipes. The new dump tubes are done which there's clips of somewhere. We got oil free lines with little P clamps to keep them nice and snug. The reflex is pretty wired up with essentially like the injectors and I need to go get um the injectors in there and then this this part of loom will clip in we're going to change out the map sensor so when i had him do the charge pipe there's another bung over here which cars obviously get nitrous and we have another bung here down here somewhere other bung right here that other bung is actually going to be where we're going to put the new map sensor factory oh, goes to like oh 45 pounds boost the map sensor everyone keeps buying goes to 55 they claim it really goes like 50 52 because of how it reads the one we're doing will go like 58 pounds of boost that it can actually read i think and that'll be enough to get us probably to my goals. 
If not, we'll go from the five bar and put like a seven bar map center in it and go higher if needed. I'm not worried. We'll run as much boost as needed. I'm not scared. I will say though, this is gonna change everyone what they're doing with their supers, I think, if this car works as I think it will. We're gonna hit the dyno in just a second, but first we're just buttoning up all the little tiny things. I really want the bumper on before we put it on the dyno. But if you look at all the little changes we've made that I haven't shown you guys yet, the nitrous setup is 100% done. I mean, there's a purge missing that's gonna come through here into the front bumper. We got heat shields on the turbo. We got this little double layer heat blanket to protect these things. There is a little room, even though it looks tight. It is tight. The down pipes, or up pipes, I call it, are 100% made, these three and a half inch massive pipes. I did get these velocity stacks for the car that I think need to go on to look a little bit cooler. Nelson just extended these wires, so I have coolant level sensor. We got dial in fuel pressure when we turn the car back on. We fl He flushed the fuel system already, so all the fuel system's cleaned out of any gunk dust that might be in there. There's so many small details that people don't even get to see in a car like this. It's like, even like this, this, I had to find fittings to get from this to that, and then drill this, modify that. All these little dumb things take a considerable amount of time. We got a random hose going here for the crankies breather. I ordered a thing that goes right here that come make KLM cells to get another breather just because I when you make 13, 14 horsepower, you're going to have crankcase pressure to some extent. I want to relieve it as much as possible. Okay. Reflex and all that is mounted up, I would say, pretty nicely over here. This is a nitrous relay. It's something important with having a motor reflex box on a car like this is having proper tuning. I personally am using MHD tuning, and that lets everything work together. Everything from the nitrous control to the port injection fueling is all controlled and calculated through the factory ECU with Motive's added feature set. There's no better way to do this. I know there's a bunch of companies that offer what you'd think is a similar type deal, having the ECU control everything, but to this day, the hands-down best option is MHD tuning. I will have my nitrous setup fully controlled by the ECU. All the fuel system settings is dialed in via entering injector calculation data, fuel pressure change versus injector flow, etc. And all that allows the ECU to properly understand how much fuel mass it's spraying, both from the direct injection side and the port injection side, and then you control a blend table and it all works perfectly. I'll get more into that when we get to the dyno tuning video and showing you guys how it all works, but if you just put a reflex in the car and then you have any other platform and you're like, oh, the car misfired, oh, my car's not good, or there's people online saying cars now blow up because reflex sucks. No, the problem is not the reflex. The problem is the tuning platforms they're working with don't integrate with the reflex, so it all works flawlessly like MHD does. That's why I'm using MHD. For the shift on the car, the factory plastics weighed more than this little bit of aluminum, so we went and Nelson made these brackets that hold the shifter and down there is actually my nitrous button and nitrous switch. Cutting the hood took days, not hours. And the reason why is we didn't want to just cut a huge hole. We could have probably cut a huge hole made an outline and then made something to rivet on top, but we wanted to make it all as clean and sleek as possible. So this took actually cutting little by little, reinstalling the hood, taking it back off. That way there'd be no metal shavings in the engine bay. Um, probably 20 plus times before it was as perfect as possible. Then we built a little scoop duct thing. That way the front turbo would get as much airflow as possible. As you see, the car finally made it onto the dyno. Be sure to subscribe to us and like this video if you guys want to see more. The next video is me, the entire dyno tuning of the car and turning up to 60 plus pounds of boost to see what it makes.